didn't. I was just happy to come and listen. <laughs> okay. okay, thanks, you. Um, yeah, I've put a note on it. Um, I was, I've, I've lost the name of the guy. Um, I was listening to one of the videos and he was um, talking about the supervision. Oh, yeah, that's um, um, Lewis Stevens. Lewis? Yeah, yeah. the, the Maori psychologist. Yeah, um, and I was just interested to hear a bit more about, he talks about contracts, for example, um, professionals uh, trying to bring in these like sort of indigenous uh, practices and stuff and then coming up against the contracts is what they were saying. I'd be a bit yeah. interested to hear a bit more about exactly what that means. Yeah, I mean Fergus Bryant who, um, I didn't give um, you guys, but Fergus Bryant who is the Māori mental health nurse <clears throat> who also talks on this stuff and it's I think his is contracts versus trust and confidence, one of his ones. He also spent, I don't know, 20 or 30 years as a fly and fly out um, nurse in the far, what do you call it? Far North Queensland and all the Aboriginal homelands up there. He was the fly and live on site for a few days. Um, um, mental health and addictions nurse, but he's a registered nurse, so he did the whole lot. Um, and so what Lewis is talking about and what um, Fergus talks about is probably easiest explained by what Fergus would say. Um, so, you know, he would go and see somebody, um, say he's a lady and he's doing a blood pressure test for her, and she might say, oh, my boy's got a few problems and um, it'd be really good if you could have a talk with my boy. And so um, he's like, well, you know, what time does your boy get to work? Oh, well, he's home at six. So then uh, Fergus's contract to be a nurse finishes at five o'clock. That's the government contract. It finishes at five o'clock. If he goes out at six, is he, he's technically breaching the terms of his contract because you're not supposed to see patients outside of um, work hours, even if you are a community nurse, you know, calling in on the home and stuff like that. And, um, and also sometimes there might be situations where you want to do something with a patient um, because you think it's necessary for that patient but it's not what you're contracted to actually do you know that's you're a nurse but that's not actually your job specifically so you can't do that with like for instance you've got a young person that's um um having a, a psychotic episode but is due to be over at an alcohol and drug residential program three and a half hours drive away um but a 30 minute flight away but you can't put them on a plane so of course you would want to put them in a car and drive there but that's not part of your contract. Um, but, but you know, as, as a Māori, um, he wants to drive this young Māori person and make sure he gets safely and, and, and is feeling in a good space to arrive at his residential substance misuse pro program, you know? Um, but the contract says, no, you can't do that at five o'clock, you finish. And um, the one we often joke about for all of us is the supermarket car park because and look, I, it was funny because even when I was in the United States, I was with other health indigenous health professionals on a reservation. And it was exactly the same with them. The minute you get out of your car at the supermarket, woof, people come towards you from everywhere. And they must, some, they must ring around and go, they're driving into the car park now. <laughs> and then you walk over to get your trolley and woof, everybody comes to you, you know, right when you're getting your trolley and stuff like that. Normally people are pretty good by the time you, you're coming out. People don't stop you in case your frozen food kind of defrosts. But you kind of have to allow a good hour to consult with patients all the way through at the car park. And people want to talk to people in the supermarket car park because they feel that it's a safe place to talk to you. It's a place that it's a space they're confident with, you know. Um, and they can get away if they want to, if they're not feeling comfortable, or they know you can get away if you really need to. Um, so, you know, that's the sort of stuff where you know, um, we always joke that, um, you, you know, if you were able to count all the people that you spoke to at the supermarket, you'd have done your Monday to Friday contractual obligations <laughs> for the government <laughs> on Saturday morning. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that, that's, it is, that's, that's what that's about. And that's what Lewis was sort of saying. It's um, Lewis is really getting into also that you've got this, you know, he's teaching them a model of, of practice, which, you know, comes from the soul and imbues their own mana into their relationship with the person. Um, but, you know, where you've got, for instance, um, 
a psychiatrist saying, well, actually, I don't believe that that patient is functioning well enough, so I want to increase their medication. The patient doesn't want the medication increased. The social worker's gone along with the mental health team, and you know, the, the, the social, wor social worker is seeing enormous progress in the person and their family, um, and that person is reading the psychiatrist's instructions that are coming through the mental health worker. Um, as a punishment for not getting it right, rather than understanding it's possibly just they've looked at the blood chems and actually, chemically speaking, there needs to be a little bit of massaging. And, um, and, and often you'll get the social worker trying to sort of explain that, but, you know, holistically, but you'll get the mental health worker who's, you know, um, got a higher level of training often, go, go, no, 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 this is medical, we need to actually, you know, talk about the, the medical stuff only. And so, um, there is that sort of imbalance, um, mm. it, it, you know, between what you're contracted to deliver as a social worker, where you're being told that the clinical lead is the mental health worker while you're in the room, um, and you can't, um, and, and so you lose a little bit of the trust and confidence, if you like, of the family that you've been working with who have been achieving, to their mind, what you're asking them to achieve. Yeah. Mm. It's interesting. It's almost like the system restricts you from... I guess the example of driving the young man three hours, it's like it restricts you from uh, problem solving, essentially. Like, it, in it that, does. In a specific context, being like, this is the solution, but you'll risk, you can't. Yeah, there, there is that, but you know, I did have some staff one day who did you know something that was incredibly wrong, and as far as they were concerned, it was tikanga Māori, you know, we were doing the right thing. And what had happened was um, a, a woman in her 30s had rung and said, you know, that this man wasn't treating her particularly well, and she'd moved, you know, to be with him, and now he was kicking her and the children out, and it was all rather dramatic. So all these wahini toa, woman warriors, wandered down there and they decided that they had read it the right way and they went into his home and of course they then rang me their manager and I said you're doing what excuse me hang on a moment did he ask her to leave yes okay so you need to pick the children up and her and just bring them back to the office no we are staying here because he shouldn't be able to do it and I said um it's actually his house where is he and they said well he's actually locked himself in the bedroom. And I said, well, that's good, because he can't be obviously accused of having done. They said, well, she said this and she said that. And I said, well, I don't care what she said. Bring her in and we will help resolve it. But you are breaking the law being in his house when he has asked her and you to leave. You are legally trespassing. And that is, you know, um, that's a breach actually of our contract, but it's also against the law. So get out of there now. And they're arguing with me. Oh, no, we know better. We're a bit older than you. And um, this is the way that, you know, things should be done when a woman's at risk. And I said, look, I'm really sorry, but I can tell you for nothing. The only person at risk at this stage is that poor man. And right now, I have two large psych nurses who are male on the way to the house to sort all of you girls out and get you out of that house. <laughs> So, you know, this is one of the problems you've got to, you've got to get the balance right or you can go too far in an extreme um, in either way and, um, and, and cause more problems than were already occurring <laughs> yeah. through sheer enthusiasm. It must also be difficult from sort of just a occupational health and safety sort of perspective and, and just... Um, you know, I guess sometimes contracts and things like that and the boundaries of contracts are drawn up for um, occupational health and safety, but if they don't, if they're too tight and they don't allow for um, emerging issues and problems to be um, dealt with in, in creative and innovative ways, then you never have any change in the system and you that, have... That's right. What, what we had in Australia a number of years ago where it was like there was X, Y and Z box and if you didn't fit in that, there was nothing for you. That's right. Yeah, 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 which is extremely common. I mean, the reason I'm researching children under 13 who misuse substances is because well, there are no treatment services for children under 18 in New Zealand for substance misuse issues. Um, and occasionally we can get the 14, 15, 16, 17 year olds 
um, some assistance, rarely, but you know, not often, but that's it. But the, the ones younger than that, we can't. So that's why I went hearing off um, down that line. But, um, you know, it, it, one of the things, for instance, I had um, a Māori nurse and a Māori social worker. They were both young, youngish. Um, and I'm just trying to think where they, they, they were maybe um, late 20s, early 30s, something like that. And um, they were wanting to help with a person who had quite high complex uh, mental health um, needs. And so what I, they said, oh, we've got this idea, we've got that idea. I said, that's great. What I want you to do is make an appointment with his psychiatrist and go and talk to the psychiatrist and say, can we do this? Can we do that? And if the psychiatrist says you can, then you're allowed to go and have a go. So they went to the psychiatrist, the psychiatrist was brilliant with them, um, and they would, were seeing this person regularly. And when something would arise and they, they would say, oh, we're just going to call him and see if we can help with this. We think we might be able to help this way, but we'd better check. And they would ring and check, and he would be able to say to them, that's a bad idea because, or that's a good idea because. But what it was doing also, it was building trust between the psychiatrist and these um, Māori health workers who did have obviously nursing and social work training, they were qual both qualified in that, um, but had no experience of mental health whatsoever. They had done no mental health work, you see. And so, you know, ordinarily, um, we don't let, um, well, I don't personally, um, let people go out to work with mental health patients who don't have a background in mental health. The last place you want to send somebody is into somebody's home who has a mental health issue um, with, with staff who don't know what they're doing. Um, so, you know, I'm, I prefer to actually use people trained either as psychologists or um, nurses who've worked in the field. But yeah, I mean, you, you've got to, when there's keen enthusiasm, let them go and, and do something like that. But I think it really moved the thought processes of the psychiatrist along uh, uh, as well about what was possible in terms of uh, people working with these people in the community. Um, and, you know, they got to experience quite a lot. I mean, he needed to go in and out of hospital quite a bit. Um, and it was really good for them and, and really good for um, the guy they were working with. Um, but also, I just think really great for the psychiatrist and, and his team as well um, to kind of get some different views. Because these girls were so young and keen that they sort of didn't hold back on their ideas. They didn't, um, that they, they weren't thinking that they might be told that, that um, they were being inappropriate or unprofessional or anything. So yeah, and, and so you see some really good things like that and you just think, oh yes, <laughs> we're getting there. Oh, yeah.